In this video, we'll talk about Guillain Barre syndrome. Recently, in India, Guillain Barre syndrome was a big news. And in last two weeks, several regions of India has reported cases of Guillain Barre syndrome. Pune, one of the major cities in India, has several Guillain Barre syndrome cases, and WHO rates it among one of the largest outbreak in the world. Out of 140 patients who were affected by Guillain Barre syndrome, 18 of them are on ventilators. So question comes, what is Guillain Barre syndrome? I mean, how does it affect the human body? What caused the disease? And is there a treatment? And most importantly, why patients are on ventilator? How does it affect our breathing? All these aspects would be answered in this video, so stay tuned till the end. So Guillain-Barre syndrome is also known as um, acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, quite a mouthful, is a disease where the peripheral nervous system is affected due to an autoimmune attack. That means the body's own immune system attack the peripheral nervous system. That lead to muscle weakness, tingling and many other symptoms in the Guillain-Barre syndrome. So here is a nerve and the nerve is covered with a sheath known as myelin sheath. Myelin sheath ensures that there is a rapid conduction of the nerve impulse. Now in Guillain-Barre syndrome, what happens is the body's own immune system, which was supposed to protect the body, mistakenly attacks these kind of myelin sheaths. As a result, the myelin sheath is damaged that lead to poor conduction of nerve impulse in the peripheral nervous system. And that's the key of the pathology of this disease. Now the peripheral nervous system is really important for controlling several bodies function. For example, it controls breathing rhythm. Sometimes it regulates the way we move our hands and legs, etc. So obviously in this, in this syndrome, there is a numbness in the extremities there could be also muscle weakness and tingling sensations so visible symptoms involve numbness in the hands and the legs most prominent in the extremities that means in the fingertips or the toe tips then there is swallowing difficulty there could be shortness of breath so the clinical presentation includes a progressive onset of pain which is starting from the extreme and eventually ascending upwards. People also call this stalking pattern of pain. That means as if the pain is worn like a stalking. Basically, the second thing is <coughs> paresthesia. That means numbness and tingling in the extremities that we have discussed all, already. Third is loss of reflexes or areflexia. That means fine-tuned reflexes which are not controlled by your brain, those are hampered and that is crucial for survival of any species. There could be autonomic dysfunction leading to irregular heartbeat, blood pressure instability, etc. Also, there could be respiratory involvement. In severe cases, ventilation is required. So at this point, we should ask how there is a respiratory involvement. Is this caused by a respiratory virus? Well, the respiratory involvement is due to a different reason. So basically, there are important nerves such as phrenic nerves which supplies uh, to the diaphragm. Now, diaphragm is a particular muscular structure that helps to contract the lungs and basically change the volume of the entire thoracic cavity. So in the chest cavity, it make, it regulates the breathing patterns. So if the phrenic nerves are affected, that would lead to a problem in the breathing rhythm. Also, there could be weakness in the intercostal muscles. These are also uh, muscles associated with breathing. That would lead to hypoventilation or a breathing difficulty. Also, there could be uh, bulbar dysfunction. That means a brainstem involvement. Brainstem has specific regions which regulate the swallowing and, uh, and protects our airway system from uh, swallowing any kind of like food or anything. So if this particular rhythm and this particular function is disrupted, then there would be swallowing of uh, 
saliva following swallowing of food etc which might lead to an aspiration pneumonia and these are the leading cause why a patient might need a ventilator in this particular disease so just to summarize the clinical presentation there could be motor symptoms that means progressive and this progressive means it happens over days there are progressive ascending paralysis like a uh, problem mostly these are symmetric that means happens in both the uh, legs or both the hands and the pattern is distal to proximal which is actually a stocking or glove like pattern then there could be involvement of the uh, uh, lungs and, and respiratory system basically sensory uh, functions can also get compromised autonomic functions such as regulation of heartbeat heart rhythm etc can be getting dysregulated and reflexes can be compromised leading to areflexia so the risk factors include one of the major risk factor is campylobacter jejuni bacteria viral infection and sometimes influenza vaccine that is rare so basically epstein barr virus cytomegalovirus and in some cases noroviruses are reported to do this kind of um this kind of syndrome these are associated with it but it's hard to really put them in a causal stage now the question is how does in these infection can actually lead to guillain barre syndrome so imagine there is a bacterial attack in the body so obviously body would like to clear that bacteria and as a result body would secrete uh, i mean the immune system of the body the b cells would secrete specific neutralizing antibodies against these bacterial antigen but some of these antigen mimics the antigens that that are normally found in the nervous system so obviously due to this molecular mimicry mistakenly the antibodies secreted by the b cells affect the myelin sheath and that leads to the damage of the peripheral nervous system this is a boon for the bacteria but a huge loss for the body and this leads to the uh, overall dysfunction in the peripheral nervous system in the guillain barre syndrome now there are several subtypes of the guillain barre syndrome for example the most common one is aidp or acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy that means this neuropathy is due to demyelination most common in us and uh, europe there is also acute motor axonal neuropathy this is most oftenly associated with campylobacter jejuni infection there is acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy so both sensory and the motor system are compromised here and this is very severe actually and there is another variant known as miller fisher syndrome which is characterized by ataxia and uh, areflexia so these are the overall subtypes but anyway in this particular case the aidp is the most common one how is the diagnosis done so one of one can check the nerve conduction velocity using electromyography test so overall a decreased uh, decreased parameter would basically tell uh, that there is a diffuse demyelination happened in the guillain barre syndrome that might have reduced the conduction velocity also csf examination is really important cerebrospinal fluid can be collected by lumbar puncture and in the csf there is an abnormal increase uh, increase in the protein concentration protein concentration more than 55 mg per deciliter with little or no uh, pleomorphic cells would indicate a gbs syndrome so the white blood cells are generally not there so basically it's not a csf infection or a meningitis so that can be ruled out so overall um, these are some differentials that a clinician need to know but overall the treatment option requires plasmapheresis and ivig uh, are the first line of treatment basically corticosteroids are generally not indicated so frequent monitoring of the situation respiratory function and other kind of um, rhythms has to be monitored properly so that is why icu admission might be required an aggressive physical rehabilitation is, is needed it's often fatal for less than 10% of the cases but sometimes there could be unknown cause that is causing this disease and could be could be very detrimental for the human being 
So re recovery might take even up to one year. So here is a quick summary that would help to remember you about the Guillain-Barre syndrome and the pathologies associated with it. So it's called ADIP, so acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. And the paralysis or the overall progression of the nerve weakness happens in an ascending fashion. There is, it's also autonomic neuropathy and, uh, and there is a presentation of albuminocytological uh, association. That means basically there is more protein in the cerebrospinal fluid. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow our notes in Instagram and Facebook page. So see you in the next video. You can support us using super thanks and see you.